Welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank. And I'm Shan Stout. Shan, it's always fun when we get to talk with the people behind some of our favorite places here in Cookville. And I know that Plenty Downtown Bookshop is at the top of the list for both of us. Uh, I was just there before the holidays to get me a new book. I also bought a couple of cards and ornaments for Christmas gifts. It is a wonderful addition to the Cookville West Side. Now, Jonathan, you know it's appropriate that they're a bookshop because the store itself looks like it's straight out of a storybook. It is enchanting, and so is Lisa Urich, who is the owner of Plenty, along with her husband, Dave. She is a powerhouse for sure. She's got a bi-weekly radio program called Life of Plenty on News Talk 94.1. She and Dave were just named to cook the lifestyle's most influential people list, and they have another business venture, Franklin Fixtures, that we're going to talk with her about as well. But first, we are talking to Tennessee Tech student body vice president, Claire Myers. Now get this, she is a chemical engineering major with a minor in vocal performance. Talk about a dynamic duo there. So singing and math, two things I cannot do very well. <laughs> uh, she, she is so impressive and she's in her senior year. So I'm eager to talk with her about her future plans because it is apparent when you listen to her speak that there is nothing she can't do. Well, let's not keep folks waiting any longer. Here is our conversation with Tennessee Tech SGA Vice President, Claire Myers. Welcome back, everybody. Our guest today is Tennessee Tech student and Jackson native Claire Myers, but you can call her Madam Vice President Myers. Claire is the Student Government Association Vice President at Tennessee Tech. She's also a senior chemical engineering major with a biomolecular focus and a minor in vocal performance. Claire's roles in student government date all the way back to her days at Madison Academic High School, where she served on the student council. She's also the 2023 to 2024 service chair for Tau Beta Pi at Tennessee Tech, the nation's oldest engineering honor society. Claire, welcome to College Town Talk. Hi, and, and thank you, Jonathan and Shan, for having me. I'm so excited to be able to chat with you today about my role in student government and my life as a student. So thank you. Well, Claire, your resume is so impressive. Impressive, and you haven't even graduated yet. You are someone that obviously had no limit on where you could go, what you could be doing after high school. Why was Tennessee Tech the right place for you? Can you take us back to making that initial, uh, initial decision to enroll here? So I feel like it was a lot of different things that kind of came together and influenced me to go to tech. Um, obviously, like it's it's a good distance from Jackson and I knew my experience at high school and staying at home. I wanted to get out and spread my wings, pun intended, <laughs> a little bit. Um, so tech was a great distance for that. Um, I also was really enticed by the new buildings that were on campus. Um, as an incoming freshman, I saw the new uh, Mark Burnett Fitness Center, and that was a great uh, drawing point for me. Uh, I also, when I came first into tech, I was planning on being a actually a biochemistry major. Uh, so whenever I saw the new lab sciences building, I was extremely excited for that and the opportunities that that could open up. Uh, and going to an engineering school, I found myself being drawn to actually not do biochemistry and move into biomolecular engineering since tech does have such a great, uh, I guess tech has so many great opportunities for engineers and I still get to use the LSC a lot. Um, I've really found kind of my niche. It took a little bit, kind of went around a little bit, but um, yeah, there are several things that, that led me to come into tech. Well, Claire, speaking of your journey, as Jonathan alluded to in the introduction, student government is something that's very familiar to you, even in your high school days. So talk to us about your SGA journey here at Tech. Did you always aspire to run for vice president? The short answer is no. I never expected that I would end up here, but I'm, I'm so glad I did. Uh, as a freshman, when I first entered Tech, I was selected to be a freshman senator um, under Aaron Lay was the president at that point, and I had a great experience. Um, I got to serve on the Environment and Sustainability Committee as a freshman. I got to serve on different campus committees, um, and I really, really enjoyed my time as a freshman senator. Uh, and when I moved into my sophomore year, I was uh, chosen to be the Secretary of Environmental Affairs, 
and I really, really enjoy that role. I got to uh, form a great working relationship with the Office of Sustainability at Tech, mainly the sustainability manager, Ms. Delaine Miller. Um, so that's been a relationship that I've cherished throughout my SGA journey. Uh, and I served in that role my sophomore and junior years. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, as an engineer, I feel like many engineers are kind of hardwired to look for things that are you know, sustainable. Um, and I know, at least I do, maybe I expect other people to do as well, uh, but I really loved being able to explore that side. Um, and especially from a policy standpoint, looking at um, things related to government and policy in that role of really sustainability. And I guess I serving on in that role for two years, I kind of knew that I wanted to do more and I wanted more out of my student government experience. Uh, and I found a group of people looking to run for executive council, joined in as their candidate for vice president. And here I am today. I've, I've really been enjoying my time as vice president. I'm sure we'll get more into that role a little bit later. But yeah, that kind of explains my journey. I never expected I would have ended up here. Um, didn't know much about parliamentary procedure when I first came into student government, but I've kind of I'm a little scrappy, but I've made my way. <laughs> well, Claire, I want to pick back up on that issue of sustainability and uh, all of the work you did as a Secretary of Environmental Affairs for SGA. You were just talking about that a little bit, but you know, you led some really important initiatives to make tech an even more uh, environmentally friendly and pedestrian friendly campus. Can you talk with us about some of those efforts? Yeah, so some of those included trying to get more widespread education about how to recycle because you'd think it's just, oh, I have this plastic cup, I'm going to throw it in this bin right here, but it's really not that simple. You have to make sure it's the right type of plastic. Um, you have to make sure that it's clean enough to be recycled so it doesn't contaminate your recycling stream. That's a huge problem. Um, so there's a lot of education that needs to go into having an effective recycling system. We were involved in that. Uh, we also wrote several bills and really supported fostering a, um, a more strong bike culture on campus. Since tech is moving towards, you know, we've seen all the construction for the new beautiful pedestrian walkway. I haven't made my way to campus yet, but I'm hoping to see the progress on that soon. Um, Moving to ways of tra transportation like bikes, skateboards, e-bikes, what have you, that I think is really, really a great push that I see around tech and we wanted to support that. Um, so that's another way that in that role, we kind of supported the more sustainable aspects of being a student at tech. Claire, I'm so impressed by you. I, I love where your mind is going toward the future and that gives me it just bolsters my hope in the next generation. And I know that makes me sound like an old <laughs> lady, you. but I just really appreciate your views and your forward thinking toward uh, preserving um, the world that we live in. And there's no question here that SGA has been such an important part of your student experience at Tech, but <laughs> I'm enamored. You also have these two very diverse fields of study. Now, a chemical engineering major with a minor in vocal performance. Now, I don't know that I've ever met those two duos side by side. How did you choose that path? So I kind of explained how I got into uh, choosing chemical engineering as my career field whenever I came to tech. Um, and I found that it's been extremely fulfilling for me. I would describe myself as like a, a problem solver and honestly being in any field in engineering. And being a problem solver just goes hand in hand. It's it's a great way for me to be able to, you know, use my creativity, also use my uh, numbers and critical thinking skills. So I really, really do enjoy studying chemical engineering. And kind of as we touched on before, um, it's very easy to tie in my passion for sustainability uh, and preservation of the environment into chemical engineering because chemical engineers can do a lot of things and they can have a lot of effect on that. So the thing that kind of maybe you don't think fits into the, the little puzzle right here is the minor in vocal performance. Um, since I was, even, I've been in choir since I was in middle school. Um, I've always enjoyed it, was there all through high school. I was able to be selected for all state and all Northwest honor choirs while I was in high school. 
and just seeing the community that I got from being in vocal music um, and the opportunities I was afforded, the great experiences I got to have, I didn't want to give it up whenever I came to school. So um, I decided to add on a vocal performance miter, and with that, I've gotten to have some really cool experiences. Um, I've gotten to take private voice lessons for several semesters. I'll be finishing my last semester of private voice lessons um, this spring, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, I've gotten to be in Tech's audition uh, chorale group, and that's been really, really great. I've met some amazing people there, and I've also gotten to connect with people that maybe I wouldn't have as an engineer. Like most people think of engineers in the corner on their computer and doing things by themselves, but I like to do some things that are I like to be involved in a community, so Corral has been great for that. Um, I also have the chance next semester I'm going to be an opera workshop, so I'll get to try the more opera and musical theater side of things. So yeah, just, just to sum it all up, I've really enjoyed the experiences I've had in vocal performance minor, and like I said, I just didn't want to give up the community and all the fun that I had had in high school. I wanted to carry it on through college. So Claire, I'm sure you're getting this question all the time as a senior, but we have to ask you about your future plans. Uh, when you leave this campus, what, what do you hope the next few years looks like for you? So the next few years are not exactly charted for me, but I have a general direction that I want to go. So obviously next semester, fingers crossed, graduating with a chemical engineering degree, um, which I'm very excited for. And I've already started the steps of going on and continuing in graduate school. Uh, I'm going to do the fast track master's program for chemical engineering and stay at tech for another two to three semesters. And I've been taking dual credit classes in my senior year that will count as undergraduate and graduate for credit. Um, so that's really exciting. I'll be able to do a thesis, do some research and kind of find a project that I'm really interested in. I have a few ideas, but probably will be tied to sustainability, um, as well as maybe some sort of uh, biological, I guess, uh, way of obtaining some sort of sustainable outcome. So we'll see what I end up doing there. And when I say I've not exactly have it charted, I feel like that's, um, once I'm done with my master's, I'm not exactly sure where I want to go. Um, I'm very, very interested in staying in academia and being a professor and pursuing my PhD. Uh, so that could be an option, but you know, I'm kind of treating the master's program as a little bit of a test to see, is this something that I really want or is this something that I think that I want? So if not, I'll probably find a, a job somewhere as a chemical engineer, um, which I've really enjoyed the experiences I've had working in those roles throughout school. So I don't know exactly where I'll end up, but I, I have a I have a few ideas. <laughs> well, wherever you end up, they're going to be very lucky to have you. You are exceptional, and I've enjoyed this interview, and I hate that it's over. But <laughs> Claire, we like to end each of our interview with the same question. So this is our, our final question of the day. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? In a lot of ways. So as I first mentioned, it's impacted my career trajectory. I, if I had gone somewhere else other than tech, I likely would have been studying biochemistry, which there definitely are ways that things kind of go in line between engineering and chemistry, but that's one way. And I'm really excited that I'm in the field that I am now. Um, but I guess the more heartfelt way, I, I feel like tech has really given me a great environment to be able to learn and grow. I've done some great mentors in my journey as an undergraduate student. Um, and using their advice, their support, I've been able to have some great opportunities. SGA, Cal Beta Pi, uh, choir as well. I've, I've really enjoyed being able to, to take that mentoring that people have given me um, and being able to kind of find my niche. I feel like that's, that's the key. You know, like wherever you end up, you want to find where you feel like you are doing what your purpose is. You feel like you're fulfilling other people's lives while fulfilling yours. And I feel like tech has really given me that place to be able to find my niche and find fulfillment for my life and, and help others find their way as well. Well, I've so enjoyed talking to you today. Thank you so much for being our guest on College Town Talk. Thank you. And for our listeners, you can learn more about student government at Tennessee Tech by visiting tntech.edu slash SGA.
Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now talking to the woman behind the magic of Plenty Downtown Bookshop, the lovely, the intelligent, the brilliant Lisa Urick. Now, Lisa is a Cookville native and Tennessee Tech alumna who, together with her husband, Dave, has created one what has already become one of Cookville's best love destinations. And I, I can't say enough about this space. It has ambiance, gifts, cards, a cup of hot tea, and of course, a great book and places that you can sit down and just enjoy the atmosphere. And the best part, Plenty is a nonprofit that, as Lisa is going to explain, I'm sure, belongs to the community and exists for the community and neighborhood development that is grounded in a love of books. Now, Lisa and David are, if that isn't enough, also the owners of Franklin Fixtures. Now, that's a local manufacturing business. Uh, they create high-quality, competitively priced custom fixtures for independent retail and small businesses, including bookstores, of course, around the country. Now, Lisa also hosts, she's very busy, Life of Plenty, an interview-style radio show, and it airs every other Saturday on News Talk 94.1. And we are still going. She and her husband, Dave, are also part of Cookville Lifestyle's 2023 Class of Most Influential People. Lisa, welcome to College Town Talk. I just feel better listening to you talk. I don't know about all of those things, but I'm so excited to be here with you, Shannon. Thank you. Well, you know, we've been friends for a while now, and we've got to start by talking about the bookstore because it's such a jewel. Now, it has a warm, inviting atmosphere. It has an amazing selection of books, gifts, games. There is something for everyone. And as a matter of fact, you're going to you're gonna take this as a personal point of flattery. Both of my sons went and got part of their Christmas present from your bookshop. Uh, they wanted yes. to come down. And, they, and so I just said, look, I'm not going to buy something for you. I'm just going to send you down there with my card. And uh -huh. you can get what you want for part of your Christmas and they had the best afternoon. They love your space. They love all the unusual things you have to offer. And they both came away with books, uh, but my son Charlie also came away with a very unique teacup that he drinks from every morning. So I just <laughs> I love, love it. your space. And I think that so many other people do too. I think that we all can agree there was such a need for a space like this but there's also challenges for local bookshops in the era of the competitions of online retail, big box stores. So why a bookshop in Cookville and why right now? Well, that's a great question. You know, with in, in our manufacturing work, Dave and I get to be involved with independent bookstores across the country. And we help eight to 10 of them start up every month. And we have seen over the last eight, nine years that we've been involved such powerful stories of community uh, in the toughest times in that this nation has faced. People have started flocking to their independent bookstores as a safe space and as a connecting space. And even through COVID, these were the spaces where, where conversations were happening. And, and we just see so much downtown community good. And, and especially coming out of COVID, where people have felt more isolated maybe than ever before. Um, we felt like it was it was time for, uh, and we had the opportunity because actually uh, one of our customers lost their lease and we had these shelves and we said, how about now? So it was it was a, a big leap for us because it is a, a nonprofit and it's our desire to build this as a gift for our community to raise book culture. And I like to say that plenty is like a tree and what you see in the store is like the tree trunk, but there are all these branches. So there's, we're working with the schools, we're working the libraries, we're working with uh, trying to create little uh, free libraries across the book clubs. We did 280 events last year, 280 events in a single year. And each of those events featured, you know, five to 10 people, sometimes 50, but small groups that had meaningful conversation and it, it's, it's really just about getting to be um, the, the part of the team that is connecting people with these great experiences because books matter. Three in 10 adults cannot read a children's book to a child in America, three in 10 adults. 
and four in 10 adults cannot read at a level that they need to, to function and sign contracts and get a bank account and do all these. We have a literacy crisis and, and we have depression and we have other kinds of things that all find answers in reading. And so reading is so important to our culture. So we want to make it as cool as possible <laughs> to, to read. And, and our goal is to put a, a new book in the hand, a gifted book, a treasured book in the hand of every person in the community every year. Um, and to work collaboratively by being a nonprofit, we can work with everybody else. And the, the idea of plenty goes back to my grandmother and how, you know, you sat down to her table and you knew there was always going to be plenty, you know, no matter how many people sat down. It's this idea of abundance and not scarcity and that we can abundantly partner and and that there's the room is wide enough for all of us to contribute and do our good things and and bring book culture. So that's that's what we're hoping. So the nice things you just said are just warm my heart. But it's I'm standing here on behalf of a whole team. It's it, there's Ashley Michael and and Dave and Stacy and we have 15 people working there and 30 people on our our board. We have just an enormous um, really beautiful, supportive group. So it's it's happening, and that's exciting to me. Well, I've enjoyed watching your journey and watching the shop grow and your staff. Uh, you really that all of you care so much. It, it's a it's a beautiful thing. We do. We we care. We and we get to see every day that I work in this in the shop. I experience these magical stories. I mean, either an author coming in like Ruta Cepetas and. And she's got her own postage stamp and she's writing these amazing books that have been translated into dozens of languages. She writes historical fiction um, and she wrote them in Baxter, Tennessee. And who would have thought? I mean, this woman was on, you know, Rolling Stone magazine in 2002 and she's amazing. And but in Baxter, Tennessee, she and her writing partner are writing these amazing books. And so we've got local treasures and authors and creatives and we tonight we'll have sawmill poetry series and so we'll have an out-of-town poet and we'll have about 50 people and about 10 of them will get up and and give uh, original poetry as they do once a month and watching people lean into their own poetic capabilities i mean it's just so exciting so plenty is our opportunity to really be um be involved with and connecting with our community in in meaningful ways and and just to know each other better well lisa i know that bringing authors to your bookshop and providing exposure for them is something that has been a priority for you as an author yourself you've been very supportive of uh, some of our our faculty authors here at tennessee tech people like monique duckton and the release of her new book daughters of muscadine you also recently had new york times best-selling author and the poet laureate for the state of Kentucky. Kentucky Silas House pay your shop a visit, uh, gave you all a shout out on, on social media, which was cool to see. So uh, why has hosting authors been so important to you? Well, it's, it's part of the model because when you can bring authors in to talk about their stories, it stimulates, it excites people about telling their own. You know, I mentioned Ruta Cepetis and one of her books is called You the Story. And she's passionate about getting people to tell their own story. And I counted, I'm at 328. That's the number of local authors that have approached us and said, I've written a book and I'd love to do an event or something, you know, at the store. Um, and then we found that when we invite people, like um, I, I'm excited, March 8th, we'll have Jeff, uh, Jeff Rosen, who is head of the the the, the Center for the Constitution. He wrote The Pursuit of Happiness. He's a big deal. On his board, he has five past presidents and three Supreme Court justices. And he's like coming to Cookville for an author event with plenty. <laughs> um, it's amazing that when you ask these authors, they, they want to connect with audiences, small and large. Um, Silas came and I honestly did not know who he was. And he's like the Kevin Bacon of the author world. Everybody knows Silas House. And he he said, wow, you sure have a lot of nice shells. <laughs> and it was beautiful. And he then he put it on his Facebook and Barbara Kingsolver, who just won the Pulitzer, she said, what a great store. I can't wait to visit. And she wrote Demon Copperhead. Um, it's just, uh, there's a kind of uh, a celebrity fun with figuring out how small the world really is uh, with these authors, with these big ideas and these powerful voices. And when they come into the shop and they meet 
we meet them uh, together as groups and ask them questions. Monique has has been amazing to lead writers workshops uh, for us over the past year. So it was exciting to celebrate her book um, and to read about Southern stories. Um, and, and she writes so beautifully. So it's it's important to just kind of stir the pot of of local um, creative capability of writing and of, of, of poetry because Southern voices have um, ha- have a very special place in literature. And Lisa, I'm going to add to that, that, you know, you say you can't believe that, that these authors are willing to come to Cookfield to your charming bookshop, but you're also a, a really hard person to say no to. You are <laughs> lovely and you are so charming. It is just very, very hard. It's just, it's one of those things you have a superpower. So just understand that you need to exploit that because that is your superpower. <laughs> and for all of us nice that have the privilege of knowing you, um, we know that you don't do any of this for accolades or attention. You are almost, uh, you're very comfortable behind the scenes, but you've been forced to the forefront of a lot of things in your life. And you've received a lot of accolades along the way, in spite of the fact of your humility. But you and your husband, Dave, were recently named to Cookville Lifestyle's 2023 Most Influential People list. We were there at the launch party for the magazine, and um, I, I'm not sure who was more honored, uh, you or Dave, because y'all were just adorable there together. I, I just enjoyed seeing you experience that. Well, it was, it, what, a, what an experience. I mean, what Chelsea is doing with that magazine is taking people and lifting up stories in unexpected places. And we were, we were an unexpected place. And so that was an honor. And then, you know, getting the, the act of putting makeup on and getting that photography done with uh, Chris is such an incredible talent and seeing yourself in a different way. You know, I told her, I said, you're elevating each person that you're featuring. You're really feeding the fire of something. And I, I appreciate so much what she's doing. And Andrew wrote this story and he, he spent all day with us. He got, you know, was at our plant and he did all kinds of things. And, and uh, we, we did resumes and all that. And I didn't know what he was going to write. So when he wrote what he wrote, um, well, I cried. I mean, both of us were just so bowled over. We also felt quite naked. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> it was like he reached inside and I told him, I said, you write like you're writing a song. Like you're taking, you're taking somebody's life and you're making a song about it. And <laughs> well, and that makes thing. sense because Andrew Buckner writes music as well. So right. his, I would assume yeah. his words would be lyrical. And, and, and his, his writing in that magazine is lyrical. It's like he takes one idea and writes the most beautiful song. And so he wrote us a song and it, and it was just, it's a treasure for us and something that we, um, you know, we, we felt like we had been deeply seen, which I think is what we try to do in author events and through writing and poetry, all of us, that's what plenty is about. And to, to receive that gift this year was just, um, it, it, it was, it was very in, stimulating, you know, it made me want to do that. I want everybody to have that experience, I guess. That's, that's that's what it made me want. Well, you know, Lisa, in that beautiful write-up in Cookville Lifestyle, written by Andrew Buckner that you were just talking about, and um, I, I will ditto what, what you and Shan said about his talents. He's uh, been on this podcast before, does the music for this podcast. Uh, of course, he's a Tennessee Tech alum, a person of many talents. But but in that story that he wrote, Andrew talked a lot about how you and Dave, uh, your husband, have worked together as spouses and business partners and, and how you all really are each other's biggest supporters. In fact, uh, Andrew's article called Your and Dave's Story, quote, a love story with more magic than any Nicholas Sparks novel. So what has it meant to you to share so much of your career with your husband and to then, uh, you know, have great professional success? together and be recognized for it together well you know it's it's um any any great book has a lot of uh broken roads that lead to where you get you know how you get to where you are and so we've come through uh, so many of those and when dave and i married later in life we felt like it was such a privilege to get to be together that was that was everything just to get to be together and there is such a freedom that happens when you're really well aligned with somebody, you know, when you feel like you're mated and you, you, you don't have to look backwards. You don't have to look sideways. You can just focus all your energy on forward. And, um, 
we have felt just really um, that, that God's been really good to us and, and gotten us through, you know, we, we're not really afraid of much. We started late, <laughs> you know, we, we didn't have anything. So it was, uh, um, wasn't about what we can lose, but what can we, what can we do? And, and uh, we don't feel like any of it belongs to us, but that we're getting the most marvelous ride together. And, um, and it's wonderful. We, we call one of our businesses U.S. Pillars because we, we feel like pillars, like we don't have to talk during the day, but we feel so perfectly aligned. We tell our, our folks, if you talk to him, or you talk to me, you're talking to the same person. Um, we, we don't contradict each other. It's, it's, and that's a gift. Um, and we, um, we're really excited to get to live it. It's, uh, it, 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 it's good to be in this moment right now, feeling like we're building and we're striving and there are plenty of hard things. But facing those is kind of easy when you're 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 doing it arm in arm. Well, your partnership together sounds like it could be the base of a very, very interesting book. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything about that. And I can't believe we're at the end of our interview today. Now, Lisa, as you know, because you're a fan of the podcast, we like to end all of our interviews with the same question. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Two, so many. Um, when I, I was a 4-H'er and I won some awards and I got to meet some famous people and I asked them where I should go to school and I got accepted to uh, some big Ivy League schools and such. And I chose Tech uh, because they said, take the professors. And I did. And I took, I didn't, I was undeclared. They didn't have an independent study at that time or, or um, interdisciplinary. So I took, I took professors from all disciplines and I got the best education and I loved my education. Dave went back later as a, as an adult student and uh, finished at the ripe old age of 58. I was his teacher for three of his classes. So I've taught as an adjunct. Um, and I have, there have been so many ways that my life has has woven in and out of Tennessee Tech. I went back for PhD work and I've I did about got about halfway there in community literacy. Tech has has informed the path that I'm on and provided this rich body of people and partners that impact every day, every single day. Um, and I'm so proud of of the beautiful resources we have on our campus, the, the ones that we see, the ones we don't. When we did plenty in the launch, we went to the backdoor playhouse to talk about talk about community, and tech is at the is is very much at the heart of this community. One of our desires in plenty is to pull professors over and let them talk about all their their incredibly rich ideas and good things, and and really. Uh, elevate community that way and be part of the tech campus. Well, Lisa, this has been a joy and a delight. Thank you so much for spending your time with us and being our guest today on College Town Talk. Well, thank you. I, I'm, I really appreciate the work you're doing and the way you're elevating voices and connecting us all back to this incredibly rich resource and uh, university that we have. Thank you both. And for our listeners, you can visit Plenty Downtown Bookshop at 48 West Broad Street in Cookville's West Side, and you can find them online at plentybookshop.com. Well, what fun conversations those were. We want to thank Claire Myers and Lisa Urich for being our guests today on College Town Talk. Yeah, and thanks to all of you for tuning in each week. Hey, if you are enjoying this podcast, would you do us a quick favor? Take a moment to leave a five-star review, hit that subscribe button, and share with your friends. It all helps to spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville. Join us again next week for more conversations with leaders on and off Tech's campus as we talk to the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.